Hi there everyone, once again we're at the Royal Society with head librarian Keith Moore. You know I like saying what's in the box, but it's mm. not much of a mystery today is it, because we've got a glass it's panel. It's a glass box. We can still open it though. Okay, which is the main Let's thing. do it. So if you lift those two catches. Yep. There we go. There we are. This, Brady, is a Short and Mason barograph. This is what science is supposed to look like. And I'm here with like the most English of Englishmen, and I know how much you love talking about weather, so you must be super excited about this. Well, yeah, you know what the weather's like if you look out the window, but it's nice to have an instrument to tell you as well. So this is doing the barometric pressure, presumably. That's right. So it's, it's, it's like a barometer, but it measures it over time because you have a clockwork drum here, so it's called a barograph. Okay. As the pressure is changing, obviously the pen is moving up and down and this just moves yes, over that's time. Right. So this is an aneroid barometer, so you've got cells here uh, and that's what's really doing the, the pressure measurement there. Okay. The Royal Society has always been completely obsessed about weather. The first automatic recording devices for, for the weather were made by Christopher Wren and, and Robert Hooke, so it's a continuing obsession. Do we know the story of this particular one, like where it went and where it was, or is that kind of lost in the mists of time? Kind of lost. It's probably a Royal Society instrument, but there are places where we know the Royal Society placed these things. So the Royal Society sent its observatory to Scotland, to Eskdale Muir, and we have some pictures over here. Now let's have a look here. So it says here on the front, Instruments of the Eskdale Muir Observatory. We've got a letter at the front. This paper is the outcome of numerous questions put to me at various times. The following explanations, together with the photographs and diagrams, will I hope serve as a modest attempt at answering these questions. And that's written by Albert E. Gendel, who's done us a huge favour. Yeah, Yeah. so he's superintending the, the uh, observatory. So this is the, the idiot level guide to Eskdale Muir Observatory, just what we need, Brady. Certainly what mm. I need. Keith. Let's start here. Yeah. General view of buildings and enclosure. It's gorgeous. They'd make a lovely like Airbnb these days. Mm. So there's lots and lots of building shots. There's the entrance to the observatory there. Mm. What we want are the instruments. We and do. here yeah. we go. Oh look, sunshine recorder. I like these things. These are these glass sort of spheres that burn a line into paper, don't mm. they, with the yeah. sunshine. Yeah. You can see how long the sun was out. Yeah. But look over leaf. Look over ah, leaf. Ah, and here we go. So here we have our pen barograph very, very similar to, to the one we have in front of us. You can see just a little few differences though. It is a different one. So there's the picture, James, and there's the real deal. They are slightly different. Can I look at more of these pictures though, yeah, Kate? Absolutely. These I are think fantastic. Good look. It's really everything you would want to know about a standard observatory of the period. The superintendent's house, so he's just showing where he lives. You see there's another, oh, oh, look. there we go. More instruments on the back. This is a separate electrometer and Ebert's apparatus. I don't even know what that does, but it sounds oh, impressive. There we go. And, oh, some, some electrograph records there. The one at the top, it says, is a disturbed day, and the one at the bottom is a quiet day. And we also have here in the records, our helpful Mr. Gendel has also written these sort of little pithy one-page descriptions of how all these instruments work. It's great. I mean, this is, this is exactly what we need for everything in the collections, Brady. A short guide. Oh, look at that. Look at that globe. Look at that clock. Look at that Room. This is the office and library. I love a library. You know I love a library. <laughs> no, no, yeah, I do yeah. know you love a library. But, but this, is, this is wonderful because of some of the things that it has on them. So this is a slate globe, which means that you, you could chalk features on it, just like a blackboard, and then you could rub them out again. So this is good. I, I wish I had one of those. Mm. I'd quite like to have one of those. Mm. But right here, the clock that they're using is a Shelton. That's one of the Royal Society's Shelton clocks right there. So this is, this is actually an 18th century clock that they've just repurposed to keep time in the observatory, which is rather brilliant, I think. The thermograph shed. Got to have a shed. Got to have a thermograph shed. Oh, look, look. Oh, slate look. globe, there we go. <laughs> That's a close-up of Keith's slate globe. If anyone manufactures high-quality slate globes, Christmas is coming and you know what to send, mm, Keith. Yeah. The one thing that's missing that I very much regret in these is that you don't see the people, the scientists using the instruments. I'd like to see that. Oh, here we go. We have a record of an earthquake. Brilliant. This earthquake was on June 25th, 1904. Now, you did mention that the Royal Society likes weather observations. Mm. We've got a real treasure here. These are just two tomes from quite an extensive collection you've got downstairs of Royal Society meteorological observations. Here we've got 1838, 1839. So these are just the day-to-day the -day observations that they would have taken at the Royal Society. Uh, they were doing this at Somerset House. They later went on to do it at Burlington House. But these are the sheets, if you like, with the basic information on. 
When Keith told me about this, I said, well, we have to look at what the weather was like on some kind of famous day. This is my big day, Brady. Let, let's do this one first. I chose the 31st of January, 1839, the day that William Henry Fox Talbot read his first paper on photography to the Royal Society. How did the fellows get to the place? What, what was the weather like? It was a big, big day in history of the it Royal Society. It was a big day. day in history. I, I, I'm surprised it's not a bank holiday here in the UK. It should be. Mm. It really should be. So, Brady, I know you're dying to know. What was the weather what like? What was the weather like? So here we have it, January the 31st, 1839. It was cold because mm. I'm sure we're in Fahrenheit here. So the highest temperature was 32.3. The lowest was 25.5. Well, the prey you see at the bottom is quite interesting. So it gives you what's happening in the morning, at noon, in the afternoon, and the evening. But the evening, which is when the paper would have been read, heavy snow. Now, I wonder how many fellows didn't go to see that paper being read, that great historical moment, because it was a bit snowy outside. Indeed, indeed. I decided maybe we should choose a day that was a bit more famous. I went for the coronation of Queen Victoria. Now that is a big day. I do wonder what the weather was like in London that day. Let's find out. Now you know I've chosen a special day because here we have it, June 28, 1838, and they've taken the unusual step of writing on the other page there, on the facing page, coronation of Queen Victoria. They actually wrote coronation of and wrote something and then crossed it out, so. Well, she would have been a princess till she was coronated. Oh yeah, do you think maybe they were starting to write Coronation of Princess and they changed it? Maybe, maybe. Anyway, the highest temperature, 66.3. Seems... Nice and warm. Pleasant. Oh, Lowest, 57.3. What does that say? So right at the bottom it says... Overcast. Light wind, very light rain, early. And then we've got ditto for each part of the day. So it's sun and showers throughout the day. Typical mm. English day for yeah. the coronation of Queen Victoria. There we go, anyway, a little, a little snapshot of the weather on a given day. And I love that these weather records exist all the way back. We're in the 1800s here, and we've got super, super accurate recordings made with instruments like this one here. The site is littered with hundreds of tons of steel. Still, we have a good deal more than a year ago, including the control building, although the control room is still empty. Overall, again, Optim optimistic. Yeah. Another yeah. Christmas Eve entry from Lovell. We're here at Christmas Eve 1956 now. <laughs> How does it start? Yet another Christmas without the telescope. <laughs> I feel for him. <laughs>